Office 365 Forms A User Guide to Creating Surveys Microsoft Forms is a new surveying tool which is part of Office 365. Forms provides the opportunity for a survey author to quickly and easily create individually customized surveys, questionnaires and quizzes. To access Forms from My Day Click on the My Apps icon. Left click and in your My Apps menu scroll and locate the Forms icon and left click to open. To create a new form simply left click the New Form icon button. This is an untitled form so you have to create a title just type that in there and there's an option on the right hand side if you want to include an image uh, within your title. A description There we go, that will do fine. And that's all you have to do to create a new form. Notice it is saved automatically. To go back to your remaining menu, left click the Forms button. To start building your form, left click the Add Question button. You're then given a choice of four different types of question. We'll discuss these each in turn. Let's start with a choice question. So we might have a question such as what is 2 plus 1? And currently there are two optional answers. So the user might answer 2, they might answer 3. You can add another option for them to answer 4. The add other enables the user to type in their own answer rather than use one of the three answers I've already provided here. And you can add further answers to the question if you wish. If you're going to enable the user to answer more than once to this same question, you can switch on multiple answers. You can also choose that this question is required and the user cannot proceed to the next question until they have answered this one. If you are building a quiz rather than a questionnaire, the choice question set has other options. In this example, the question asked what winter is, with the answer coming or cold, notice that we have a message option to add to this question. And you can also suggest that this is the correct answer. So let's just have another look at what winter is. Winter is white, and we may have display a message. Kind of worded that the wrong way around. There we go. And you could set this as the correct answer if you wish to. So it's very simple. You click the display message in order to add a subtitle message for the writer once an answer has been given. And then you click the checkbox to mark that this is the correct answer. And if this is a response you no longer wish in your quiz, you can click delete to remove it. And once again, we have the multiple answers and required options. Now let's use a question text. So this is a textile question in which you will ask for a uh, response from your users. Like so. And the user gets to type their answer in this box. They have 4,000 characters uh, which will give them a lengthy text question. So you can also set it as long answer. Now the only difference here is they can now use a carriage return or the enter key in order to 
space out their question uh, response rather than have a single string of text. Uh, you'll understand this better if you actually just try it. Just build one of these and then have a look at the sort of responses you're going to get. Once again, you can set this as a required answer so that users cannot progress to the next question until they've completed this one. Now let's use the rating question set. So I'm going to, you can rate on a scale of stars. So you could have 10 stars, 5 stars, or numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll go with those, shall we? So then you will say, please rate this. Bad typing there. Please rate this question these questions why not okay so they can be righted between one to five but one to five of what so you can um, make this a lot easier for your respondents if you add a label so the ellipsis three dots in the bottom right the options menu and select label so we'll have one as not very good and five as excellent. So now that we have a scale rating from not very good to excellent with the respondents choosing by selecting a radio button along that scale. And the final question type we can create is date. Now the only answer that uh, this question can receive is a date selected from this pop-up calendar. So the question has to be date related. So we will have in this example, when did you complete this survey? And that's it. Again, you can make this required and we can add new questions as before. There are a number of options for editing within your survey or quiz, which include copy question, which if I left click here, will create a copy of question four, which is now number question five. We have the option to move this question up. Let's just change the question a moment. Um, let's just put one word in there just to make it differentiate between these two so that when I place up, you can see that uh, it's now moved from five to four. Okay, there's that single differentiating that last word I typed in there to make them look different. We can also choose to delete this question. Left click. And depending on the sort of question we have, um, uh, I'll come back to that. That's on the choice quiz questions. You might have noticed there was also a dustbin at the end position of those quiz question options. So the other option we can place in here uh, is images or videos, insert media, which we haven't looked at. So I'm just going to briefly show you how to do that. You simply left click on the icon. I'm going to in place an image. Okay, there's already been uh, some choice here. Let's find a nice chair. Left click on the search icon. Here are some chairs. Now I've currently got this checkbox. So we're looking for Creative Commons licenses. We're looking for items that we're permitted to share or use. So hopefully that's one of those. It wouldn't hurt you any to go and examine um, that within Google or another search engine and just check that Creative Commons license, license for that image. But for my current example, I'm going to use it very briefly. Fair use, I'm claiming here. I'm going to click the Add button. And that image is now added to my questionnaire. Okay, if you wish to, you can edit the image using existing uh, tools here for cropping. Alternative text for screen readers can be added to this image. And we have the option to delete the image if we no longer wish to use it. Once you've completed designing your questionnaire or quiz and added all of the um, questions, 
that you wish to ask, you'll want to see how it appears to your respondents. So at the top of the form screen we have a preview button. I'm just going to left click there. So here's your survey as it would appear on a computer. And you will see the questions exactly as that user would view them. You also have an option to view it as it will appear on a mobile device. So it's sort of simulating a telephone screen here, a mobile phone screen, uh, or similarly a tablet. And you can just view your questionnaire as a mobile user would. To return, just press the back button. If you want to make your questionnaire or quiz more appealing, you have the option to add a theme. That option is at the top on the forms bar under the text theme left click we have a range of color schemes to choose from or some nice images and you can add your own from the upload image icon I'm just going to choose this ocean theme and if I turn to my form here you'll see that we now have submarines and divers uh, making my form look more attractive. So I've added my questions and I've applied a theme and now I wish to present my questionnaire or quiz to my intended subjects so that they can respond to it. So what you're looking for on the forms menu bar is the word share, left click and you have a number of choices of how you're going to share this quiz. You can copy this clip to send uh, via email or as a link. We can create a QR code so you can take that image, either download it or do a screen capture to take that QR code and distribute it um, in whatever means you choose to your uh, expected users. We can have an embed link, which you can again copy just by clicking in this button here, so that you can put that into uh, a web page or a Sway presentation as it suggests here, or even on a Moodle page. And we have the option to directly email this presentation to your users. If you left click here, Outlook will open, allowing you to choose your email respondents' email addresses. Notice here that currently this is set so that only persons in my organization can respond. You can send it, uh, set it so that anyone with a link can respond. So whoever you send this to will be able to respond and complete your survey. Forms includes an option called branching which allows you to direct your respondents to specific questions depending on how they responded to a previous question. So in this example, <coughs> excuse me, here is question one. And to the top right, next to the share button at these ellipses, left click, we can open branching options. Left click. So now, branching options for question one, if they select two, then they can go to the next question. If they like select three, they go to the next question. If they like six, select four you can direct them to the end of the form for example and if they've used an other then you can set them to a specific question I'm just going to have to move the screen slightly here uh, to question four so depending on how they respond here they will be directed to a different part of the remaining questionnaire We have other options that we can set from the same menu next to the share button. That's these three dots, the ellipsis on the top right hand side. Left click to open the menu and left click on settings. We can now choose who is able to complete this form, questionnaire or quiz. Currently it's said that only people in my organization can respond. You can set it so that anybody with the link can respond and remember we can acquire that link either as a text an embed code or a QR code from those share options we have the option to record the name 
of the respondent of those in your organization. This option is not available when it's anybody with a link. You can also set that the respondents can only participate once. We also have options for whether you're accepting or not accepting answers at this time and you can leave messages for uh, intended recipients if they try and open this form outside when you're accepting responses and you can set the date when you're going to begin accepting responses on this quiz and the date at which point the, the options will end. The shuffle questions, I'm just going to lift this a little, it applies only to the quiz style of questionnaire, in which case you can shuffle all of the questions each time that the quiz is opened, and you can lock specific questions. In this case, the question one is a date, there's not really any point in shuffling where that is, and so it is locked in position. But you can also lock questions one to three if you wish to. When you run in a quiz, there's an option here to assign a number of points that can be achieved for those completing the correct answers. And on the ellipsis options, you can show those results immediately as the respondents are completing the quiz. Or you can switch it off and then the answers are only going to be revealed after you have reviewed the answers. It's much easier to let the machine handle that, I think. Once you've completed your survey, shared it and had your users assemble their responses, you'll want to see those responses. So from your forms menu, having opened your questionnaire, quiz or survey, on the right hand side we have a responses tab and I can see that there are six responses already recorded. I can left click on responses and see a summary of the returned results. If I click the View Results button, I'm then able to choose which of my respondents responses I'm actually looking at. And the Back button, take me back to this, the overall view, and if I choose Open in Excel, it gives me the option to save my responses. I'm then going to open that folder. Here is the testing forms responses and they're all listed including exactly how they responded to each of the questions.